A common question that comes up for people new to Zwift is, does it have drafting where you can position yourself behind other riders to conserve energy or to ride at a higher pace that you may not be able to hold by yourself? The answer is yes, it does. Zwift implements virtual drafting, but there are two very important things that are a little bit different to outside riding for how it's implemented inside virtually. The number one thing to remember with virtual drafting is you can't feel it. There's nothing physical about your virtual draft that you can feel whilst you're on the trainer. It doesn't change the resistance on your trainer. There's no wind cues, there's no bike handling cues. It's just a little bit different. I think Greg Lamont summed it up. It doesn't get any easier, you just go faster. And that pretty much sums up exactly what happens with Zwift in the virtual draft. You still have to turn the cranks, you just go a little quicker. Which brings me straight to point number two, you have to keep spinning, you have to keep power to the pedals. In Zwift, if it sees zero watts, it's like pulling on the brakes, pulling back the reins, things slow down. This was implemented a while ago in Zwift to help with bunch positioning, but it's not like outside where you can sort of take your foot off the gas a little bit, coast, do your shoe up, have a stretch, do whatever you need to do, and you won't lose a lot of bunch time or a lot of bunch position. In Zwift, that's not the case. If it sees zero watts, you go sailing back pretty quickly and you've got to do a bit of work to make that up. Let's have a quick look at that here with me riding with Veronica. You can see there only after a few seconds I shot backwards. Let's jump over to Strava and have a quick look at the data. The blue is speed. You can see me. Here's me riding along on Veronica's wheel. 36 kilometers an hour, 36 kilometers an hour and I just coast for a little bit. Then the speed goes down to 25.2 very very quickly. And you can see the watts I had to put back in there, so 400 watts plus for a few more seconds to get back on her wheel. Depending on the roads you're riding on, outside's a little bit more forgiving than that. So remember, in Zwift, when you're in the draft, when you're in the bunch, make sure you keep spinning. With the two big tips now covered, a few smaller ones that might help you on your way to getting on that wheel and getting a few more kilometers covered. First of all, how do you know if you're in the draft? Well, visually, you can see you're sitting on that rider's wheel that's in front of you. And if you drop too far off, a little message will pop up the top there saying, close the gap, and it'll give you a little distance indication of how far you've got to go to get back on that wheel. There are other factors that do influence the draft, such as weight and height, etc. Today, we're just covering the basics of how to hold that wheel. According to the Zwift website, when you're on a time trial bike, you can't draft, but you can draft the time trial bike if you're not on one. So if you can find a triathlete going a little quicker than you, jump on that wheel and hold on. It's also stated that drafting doesn't work in structured workouts, which is fair enough because you're doing your own thing. And for bunch rides, there is a cumulative effect. So you will move pretty quick in a big bunch. Remembering the first two rules, you won't feel it. You'll just go quicker and keep spinning, keep spinning. And just like outside, don't hang near the back where you just might snap that elastic and go shooting backwards. So try and stay up the front or around the middle. That's the best place to find. Uh, you'll get a good draft and a good sit and clock up those Ks like nothing else. And as with riding outside, practice makes perfect. So find yourself a partner as I have here with Veronica and just practice that drafting effect and go a little quicker. All right, hold that wheel. We'll see you soon.